Okay. <laughs> On that note, let's start this video. Hi guys, Kat here from Standing Stone, and I wanna to talk to you about the number one mistake people make when they train their dogs. What is that, you may ask? That is rushing your training. Why is that a problem? Well, you get people with a puppy that's nine or 10 weeks old and they think they've accomplished all of these things. That's not the case. Your puppy is being really good at guessing in a very controlled environment. Huzzah, they're done. No, what we need to do is Slow our training down. We want to make sure that the puppies have a true understanding of all of those behaviors, that those behaviors become conditioned. So we want to not only teach the behaviors, but then we need to generalize those behaviors. Move your training session from meal time to middle of the day time. Put your training sessions in different environments. Make sure that your puppy truly understands the cues that you're asking with cue differentiation. We need them to actually exhibit the behavior we're asking for and not just guessing or anticipating what the next thing is that we're going to ask them. That means that they'll have a true understanding. And you need to be honest with yourself. If you ask for a sit and your puppy comes and touches your hand, or you ask for a recall and your puppy sits, that means your puppy doesn't really know what they're doing and they're just guessing. Then let's add some distractions into that. If your puppy can actually respond to the cues that we're asking for in multiple different environments with lots of distractions going on, then you're ready to move on to the next thing. So don't rush through it, enjoy the process. It's not about how fast you can get from point A to point Z, but it's about how perfect you can get from point A to point Z. And I don't mean that every training session is gonna be perfect. I mean, we're human. Our dogs start as puppies. They're not going to do everything perfectly, but we are going to try and develop them to be as good as they can be and to build on that success to actually gain a full understanding of what we're asking for. That way, these puppies, when we get to more advanced things like collar conditioning these behaviors, then chaining more advanced behaviors together for a full finished product is going to be the dog that we want, not the dog that we got through rushing through our training. So slow it down. Why? Can we slow these things down and what is the end result? Let's take a few examples here of going for a walk with your dog on leash. Well, if you haven't really put the time in to teaching your dog how to heal and making sure that they actually have a full conditioned understanding of that, then when you're like, I just wanna go for a walk and enjoy it, well, your dog's still gonna be pulling you down the sidewalk because they haven't actually learned the behavior. You haven't taken the time to teach those behaviors in slow, controlled environments that then can be moved into those distracting situations like a walk down the sidewalk where you're meeting other people. For retrieving, we first teach dogs how to retrieve to hand. Then we have them do the retrieve where they go out and fetch something. Then they're holding it all the way back to us. When they get back to us, we want them to swing into a heel and present nicely and calmly. All of those behaviors are taught one step at a time, slowly, and then conditioned and chained together to create this full, perfect picture of what we want this behavior to be. Our good friend Bob Owens at Lone Duck talks about you gotta slow the fast ones down and then speed the slow ones up, which we'll talk about later. But slowing the fast ones down. We've got these dogs, high-powered sporting breeds that are super excited to do everything in life. And if we keep conditioning them to speed up, be overly excited, go, 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 then we're gonna end up having a dog that ends up not being able to exhibit calm behaviors. And then we're gonna end up having to make corrections for those behaviors. So we're setting our dogs up for failure, not for success. And that's what we ultimately wanna do. Guys, we wanna set our puppies, our dogs up for success. And that means I challenge you, slow your training sessions down. Get from point A to point Z as perfectly and as with as 
less confusion as you can so that your dog can truly be the dog of a lifetime. I'm Kat the Dog Trainer. We'll see you in the next video.